This is our We're back. Apologies. Um, I don't know what's going on with this thing, but we're back. All right. Um, in George Sandy's Laws for Virginia, whites were enslaved forever. The service of Europeans bound to Berkeley's hundred was deemed perpetual. These accounts have been policed out of much touted standard reference works such as Abbott Emerson Smith's laughable whitewash colonists in bondage. In 1855, Frederick Law Olmsted, the landscape architect who designed New York Central Park, was in Alabama on a pleasure trip and saw bales of cotton being thrown from a considerable height into a cargo ship's hold. The men tossing the bales somewhat recklessly into the hold were subjugated Moors, and the men in the hold were Irish. Olmsted inquired about this to a ship worker. Oh, said the worker, the niggers are worth too much to be risked here. If the paddies are knocked overboard or get their backs broke, nobody loses anything. Before British slavers traveled to Africa's west coast to buy subjugated Moor slaves from African chieftains, proving that we were the ones that were selling ourselves into slavery, right? They sold their own European working class kindred, the surplus poor as they were known. So, so do your research on the surplus poor. And then keep in mind King Alfred plan acknowledging that poor whites are part of the minority right from the streets and towns of england into slavery tens of thousands of these european slaves were kidnapped children in fact the very origin of the word kidnapped is kidnap the stealing of european children for enslavement read that again in fact the very origin of the word kidnapped is kidnapped the stealing of european children for enslavement according to the english dictionary of the underworld under the heading kidnappers is the following definition a stealer of human beings especially children originally for exportation to the plantations of North America the center of the trade in child slaves was in part cities of Britain and Scotland quote press gangs in the hire of local merchants roamed the streets seizing by force such boys as seen the proper subjects for the slave trade children were driven in flocks through children were driven in flocks through the town and confined for shipment in barns so flagrant was the practice that people in the countryside about Aberdeen avoided bringing children into the city for fear they might be stolen and so widespread was the collusion of merchants shippers suppliers and even magistrates that the man who exposed it was forced to recant and run out of town van der Zee bound over page 210 european slaves transported to the colonies suffered a staggering loss of life in the 17th and 18th centuries during the voyage to america it was customary to keep the European slaves below deck for the entire 9 to 12 week journey. A European slave would be confined to a hole not more than 6 feet long, chained with 50 other men to a board with padlock collars around their necks. The weeks of confinement below deck in the ship's stifling hold often resulted in outbreaks of contagious disease which would sweep through the cargo of European freight chained in the bowels of the ship. And you can hear 
the, 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 the black leaders, right, talking about, oh, no, that's just them, they're trying to steal our story and whatever. Crap. Don't even go for it. Because we were the original masters. And it's impossible that three million six foot plus brothers and sisters are going to sit there and let some European come and put them on a ship and send them across to the Americas. We wouldn't let that happen today. And we're way weaker than our ancestors were. And we wouldn't let that happen today. So how dare we insult our ancestors, right, by assuming, just because we're listening to these liars, right, assuming that 3 million or 30 million, 80 million, how much ever people they say that they brought over here on slave ships, just took slavery, Just we, we just put our hands out for shackles and put our necks out for shackles to come get put in slavery. Forget that. I ain't buying that. Ships carrying European slaves to America often lost half their slaves to death. According to historian Sharon V. Salinger, so Sharon, letter V, Salinger, S-A-L-I-N-G-E-R, scattered data reveal that the morality for European servants at certain times equaled that for subjugated Moors in the Middle Passage and during other periods actually exceeded the death rate for subjugated more slaves. Salinger reports a death rate of 10 to 20 percent over the entire 18th century for subjugated Moors on board ships en route to America compared to a death rate of 25 percent for European slaves en route to America. Foster our yes, no, we said by. No, 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 it's coke number. Oh, so seen. <laughs> so you have the thing there. So you have the thing. <laughs> you have the thing. Moisturizing, moisturizing. For real. Foster our duels. Uh, D u l l e s. Writing in Labor in America, a history states that whether convicts, children spirited from the countryside or political prisoners, European slaves experienced discomforts and sufferings on their voyage across the Atlantic that paralleled the cruel hardships undergone by subjugated Moors on the notorious Middle Passage. The establishment would rather weep over the poor persecuted subjugated Moors but leave the European working class rednecks and crackers, both of these terms of derision were first applied to European slaves. Little has changed since the early 1800s when the men of property and station of the English Parliament outlawed subjugated Moors slavery throughout the empire. While this parliament was in session to enact this law, ragged five-year-old European orphan boys, beaten, starved, and whipped, were being forced up chimneys of the English parliament to clean them. Sometimes the chimney masonry collapsed on these boys. Other times they suffocated to death inside their narrow smoke channels. Long after Europe Long after subjugated Moors were free throughout the British Empire, the British House of Lords refused to abolish chimney sweeping by European children under the age of 10. The, Lord, the Lords contended that to do so would interfere with property rights. The lives of the European children were not worth a farthing and were considered no subject of humanitarian concern. The chronicle of European slavery in America comprises the dustiest shelf in the darkest corner of suppressed American history. Should the truth about the epoch ever emerge into the public consciousness of Americans, the whole basis for the swindle of affirmative action 
minority set-asides, and proposed reparations to African Americans will be swept away, which has already been mm -hmm. swept away. Right. The fact is, the European working people of this country owe no one. They are themselves the descendants, as Congressman Wilmot so aptly said, of the sons of toil. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the first slaves were the Europeans, right? And then here's a little, little picture, right? Now you have the you have the overseer right here, you know what I mean? Just the slave the slave seller, you know, mm -hmm. chilling, getting fat. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you have one sister in here, mm -hmm. right? One sister and then everybody else is the European. Right, and then I, I was showing this picture just to show this dude right here, mm -hmm. right? The other one, yeah. This guy right here, mm -hmm. who is the same skin tone as Samim or Sami Yatim, mm -hmm. the man who got shot up. Yeah, yeah, the man. To show that they're taking their own out right mm -hmm. now. They're not even worried about us or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're all about taking out their own now because the new so-called nigger is the European. Mm -hmm. Because we're supposed to have a nationality. We're supposed to be Moors again. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be Moors. We want to be everything under the sun except Moors. Mm -hmm. And then want to know why people persecute us. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, this is an interesting story. In 1651... Anthony Johnson earned 250 acres for importing five slaves. We do not know their land of origin. Richard Johnson, Anthony's father, received 100 acres for importing two slaves of unknown complexion. In 1653, Virginia, one of Anthony Johnson's involuntary African laborers, a man named John Casor, J-O-H-N-C-A-S-O-R, claimed his freedom because his term of indenture had allegedly expired seven years before. Mm. He fled his master's plantation and took refuge with a nearby farmer, Captain Goldsmith. Johnson insisted that his runaway laborer was not indentured but was a lifelong slave and demanded the African's return. Not wanting to become embroiled in a legal fight, with a powerful plantation owner, Goldsmith turned the worker over to another wealthy planter, Robert Parker. Parker took the worker's side in the dispute, kept him on his own plantation's workforce, and argued on his behalf in court. The case dragged on for two years with Johnson at one point agreeing to manumit Caesar, but then reneging on his settlement. On March 8th, 1655, the Northampton County Court ruled that Cesar had been a slave all along, ordered that the worker be returned immediately to Anthony Johnson, and ordered Robert Parker to pay damages for sheltering the runaway for two years as well as court costs. A few years later, Parker abandoned his career as a Virginia planter and returned to England. Twenty years later, Cesar was still owned by Mary Johnson, Anthony Johnson's widow. What is important about this tale is that Anthony Johnson was also African. His plantation from when Cesar fled was named Angola. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you do the research now on plantation names mm -hmm. you found out that all these plantation names mm -hmm. majority of them lots of them had names of African countries from back home, from back Africa. which proves that the 300 million that were taken from Africa mm -hmm. were actually taken from here because they were just shipped from plantation to plantation that were called African countries. Mm. Right? And they've been gaming us 
for the whole time. And the Mississippi River is the Nile that they've been riding up and down on boats and taking us from over there and taking us from over there. Mm -hmm. It was actually the plantations that were known as African countries mm -hmm. where they took us from. And the Europeans were the ones that were brought from over there mm -hmm. on slave ships over here, not us. Mm -hmm. Right? Lebanon plantation. <laughs> right? So research that plantation there, right? There was a plantation named Montclair. Mm -hmm. Right? Montclair is a city in South Africa. Mm -hmm. There was a plantation named Zion. Mm -hmm. There was a plantation named Montpelier, which is another city in South Africa. And then you realize that a lot of these cities in a lot of these cities that were named after plantations were in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that that coast. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. South African coast. Right? And then obviously, you know, from South Africa you get to West Africa where they say that we're from. Mm -hmm. Where the majority of us were taken from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what they say. That's what they say, right? Quote unquote. Right? That's what they say. That's the talk, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we, we the, the the point of today was servitus sustainability through ignorance. Right? Mm -hmm. So sustaining slavery through the ignorance of the people who they say are the slaves. Mm -hmm. So once they can keep us ignorant mm -hmm. to the truth mm -hmm. of what things are, then they got us. No, we're just about servitude. We're, we're just servants. Right, we're just servants, right? Everybody. Exactly, right? Um, so we're going to go, we're going to close out um, with some readings from some of our, um, or one of, you know, because this might be a, a, a little segment Mm -hmm. you know that we start doing mm -hmm. going through the works of our so-called black leaders who mm -hmm. we hold so dear to ourselves and so dear to our heart to show and prove mm -hmm. that they were about putting us in slavery mm -hmm. they were about keeping us ignorant mm -hmm. they were about continuing the continuing the assault mm -hmm. on our common sense right by having us ignorant right so the first, the first group, organization, whatever, is our boys in the NOI, okay. right? Encyclopedia of American Religious History, third edition, about the nation of Islam. Few religious movements have seared themselves as deeply into American psyche as the nation of Islam as they are more commonly called the black Muslims. Mm -hmm. right, so this is the standard. Mm -hmm. right, this is the Encyclopedia of American Religious History. Right? The, the, the Nation of Islam, nation of Islam no or as they are commonly called the black Muslims. Muslims. Right? Okay. The black Muslims. The King Alf Alf so we go to King Alfred Plan and we find out that there are 12 major minority organizations that are all familiar to the 22 million of the minority, mm -hmm. right? Leaders who do not have such usable materials in their dossiers have been approached to take government posts mostly as ambassadors and primarily in African countries. The promise of these positions also has materially contributed to a temporary slowdown of minority activities. However, we do not expect these slowdowns to be of long duration because there are always new and dissident elements joining these organizations with the potential power to replace the old leaders. All organizations and their leaders are under 24-hour surveillance by the Department of Justice, FBI, and CIA. All. Right? minority leaders and the organizations and the top of the list the black muslims that's the first people listed that's under in the king alfred, in the king alfred plan that's under 24-hour surveillance 
by FBI, CIA, mm -hmm. right? First people, black Muslims, right? And then we know that the black Muslims are, you know, from Encyclopedia of American Religious History, that the black Muslims is the common name of NOI, mm -hmm. right? Perhaps it is because no religious movement in American history has been so militantly hostile to the dominant social and political ethos. The Nation of Islam has had its genesis in Detroit in 1930 with the appearance of W.D. Farad, known also as Farad Muhammad, Wali Farad, and F. Muhammad Ali. Mm. Right? Ali. F. Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. All right? Blacks, he urged, were descendants of an honorable race who had been stolen from their homes and brought to America by the white devils. These devils had also stripped blacks of their own religion, Islam, and had forced Christianity upon them in order to have them accept their inferior status. Fard had been sent to America to awaken blacks to the real nature of the world and to free them from white domination. Fard's talk of white devils and black superiority was heady stuff for poor southern blacks who had migrated north in search of work during the Great Depression, and he soon gained a considerable following in Detroit. During this time, many followers of the late Noble Juali, C. Timothy, C. Drew Timothy Morris Science Temple, also joined Fard's movement. Organizationally astute, Far developed a strict procedure for admission into the temple as well as a hierarchy of command. By 1933, he had developed a ritual for the Nation of Islam, organized a school for boys and a training class for girls, and founded a security organization, the Fruits of Islam, designed to protect the NOI from outsiders and enforce the strict code of behavior demanding of all Muslims. Even in these early years, the Nation of Islam was rent by external problems and internal conflicts. One group rebelled against Fard's teachings that blacks owed no allegiance to an America that denied them their rights. Led by a former lieutenant of Fard's, Abdul Muhammad, they formed a counter temple with loyalty to the United States Constitution and the American flag as a guiding principle. Really? Right? It's interesting. So, the NOI splinter group, mm -hmm. right, obviously took some of what Noble Juali brought, or Noble Juali told the Moors, enforce the Constitution, mm -hmm. study the Constitution. Because that's the only way that you're going to keep these people mm -hmm. who are abusing you in check. Mm -hmm. But in order to make those talks and talk about constitution and stuff, you better have a nationality. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you're talking as black, you're not, gonna get it's, you're not getting anywhere. You're just flapping the yeah. gums, right? Yeah. Right? So on top of Elijah Muhammad in his fez, we just wanted to show this picture of Elijah Muhammad standing on his square, right, with his feet at that degree of a mm -hmm. square, mm -hmm. to show that he knows about standing on the square, which is what Moors talk about, mm -hmm. right? But if he knew so much about standing on squares and wearing fezes and all that type of stuff, right, mm -hmm. how come in Fall of America by Elijah Muhammad, right? Chapter 4, The Black Man. Right? The black man, for the first time since he has been in the Western Hemisphere, is accepting himself as a black man and not as a colored man. Like already, you know, you're supposed to have the eyebrows like, <laughs> What's this guy talking about? <laughs> right? <laughs> Although the black man has been colored, now the black man has learned 
that the coloring was false and that the coloring came from a robber, the devil. After he, the devil himself, had put our black fathers asleep to the knowledge of their black selves, the white man pretty nearly destroyed all of the original color of us and he has added his own color. Never have we, the black man, been so happy to be called black. And the book, Bible, teaches us that God will come and one day God will choose us, the black people, to be his people. We did not know anything about the false color part that God had in mind to remove from us. But now God is here among us and he is teaching us the knowledge of our color. And we love our own black color. And now we have learned that the color of our enemy is almost destroyed our original black. We are now waking up to the knowledge that black is the first color and the last color, if there be a last. And now that we have learned that black is a better color, we want to be black. You just do not have a better color than black. Black looks good all of the time. The beautiful part of black is that we love black. Since we now have the knowledge of the two colors, black and the false color, we are separating the original black color from the false color so that we can preserve our own black color forever. <laughs> the knowledge of black self given to us by him who knows us, we all should be happy and rejoicing to know that we, the black people, were never a wicked people until we followed the wicked one, the white man, after his wickedness. God has declared us, the black man, to be the righteous, and God makes it plain to see why we are the righteous. We are from the righteous black people by nature. We, the black man, are righteous by creation, and we cannot be other than righteous. This is the happiest time of our, the black man's life. It is the happiest time of our life to learn who we are and to learn that that who we are. The black man is the best of the people. Right? So this is what this is what they're pushing. Yeah. Right? This is why you're gonna go downtown and these guys are gonna come up to you trying to sell you black literature mm -hmm. and black books and mm -hmm. black black stuff, right? But when we go to Noble Drew Ali's teachings and we go to the Divine Constitution and bylaws, mm. right? Act 6 says that with us all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that we may know that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. Because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men must now proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live, and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Jewali the Prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Now, if he's a member mm -hmm. of the temple, mm -hmm. and there's pictures of him holding the flag and all that mm -hmm. in the first convention, mm -hmm. And he's going to go completely against the teachings and have a chapter in his book called The Black Man mm -hmm. and talk all this trash right here, right? Now, remember, this is the same guy who said, who people say, you know, he, he was teaching the supreme wisdom or whatever, Yeah. right? And you're talking this? Yeah. It sounds like a funny quote. The amount of times you use black. The amount of times you use black. It yeah. sounds like they're it's running like, a ritual on you. Or they're trying to hex you. Or they're trying to, 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 to put this thing in your mind so you can... you can. They didn't say black and white. They said black and the black last and, color. Black and the, the last like, color. Right? The last color. You know, and then he also knows 
if he was a member of the temple, that color is a law term, right? That means fraud. Mm. You know, that means fake, right? Now, chapter three. We got we got a little time. Let's see what these guys are on. Right? Let's see what these guys are, and then let's see. This was um. 1973, right? Okay. Copyright 1973, right? Self first, chapter three. Self first. We, the black people in America, do not think for self first. Failing to think for self first is the greatest mistake we, the poor black people, who are up from servitude slavery of the fathers, can make. But for the slave master's children, our failure to think for self first is wiser than anything their fathers could hardly dream of in their day and time. Self first, in over 100 years, we, the black people, have not learned to think for self first. This is due to the fact that we try to think something for the benefit of slave master, something to make him smile at the freed black slave. Trying to win the love of the white slave master has been our, the black people's, great mistake. Now it has become our gravest mistake. To have love for them, the white race, means the fire of hell that God has heated is being heated up for both, you who love the devil and the devil too. Do not blame the white slave master for your love and desire for them above the love and desire for Allah God who loves you. While the white slave master devil does not love you, the devil's nature will not let, you, let him love you. The white slave master is so full of deceit that he can deceive you and all others. The Bible teaches us. The Quran refers to the white slave master, the devil, as the arch deceiver. As a deceiver, the devil has no equal. He is the professional, the wisest of all deceivers. So from the slave master preachers making parents up today, he is the professional and wisest deceiver of all the civilizations of earth. And he has deceived all of the civilizations of earth. The Bible teaches you that he deceiveth the whole world. The white slave master, the devil, did not deceive us, the black people in America alone. He has deceived every human being well except the angels of heaven. The arch deceiver, the white man, has deceived the reverends and has made them and has made and that he has made and this is why they will not accept Islam. They would, get, they would rather go to hell with the white slave master devil if the devil will just honor them as a reverend that the devil has made. In the Bible John in the Revelation sees the preachers and his followers burning in hellfire with the devil, the white slave masters. I do not care much how much you teach or tell the reverend that he is headed for hell in following the white slave master devil. They ignore the warning for the sake of the honor of the white slave master. But when you look into it, you will see that the white slave master is not honoring the reverend. He is fooling him. Right? Then it goes on and on, and then we get to. So the devil kills those whom he sent, and who will not obey him. So look out, Reverend. Be careful, Reverend. The white slave master has proved in our own eyes and hearing by killing Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., who thought he was blessed to go to heaven, but instead he went to hell with his enemies. I do not mean a hell that is the earth someplace, Brother Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. went to hell in the wickedness of his white enemies, trying to satisfy his white enemies. He gets no credit for all of the work that he did for his enemies, and his enemies know that. I dare any one of the Christian theologists, the, theologists to try to prove that Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. went anywhere else. Good man! that he was. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was deceived and frightened to his very heart by the enemy. Self first. Think for self first. 
When Reverend Martin Luther King talked with me at my home, I saw in him that he wanted to believe me, but he was so afraid of his enemies. Right? Now we're going to stop there for a second. Right? Now, if he was so afraid of his enemies, right, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have killed him. Right? The ones who are afraid of their enemies are the ones that are still alive. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Jr. was becoming a constitutionalist and a human rights activist at the end of his mm -hmm. career, let's say. Mm -hmm. Right? And when he made that mountaintop speech, mm -hmm. that was their sign that he's about to give up everything to these people. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. While these guys are pushing black agenda. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, if you're going to push an agenda that's going to be in favor of the people not having a birthright, mm -hmm. then they'll fund you forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll give you Washington. Go have a million man march. I don't care what you guys do. You guys aren't going to amount to do it. Nothing's going to come out of that anyways. Y'all just some marching Negroes. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to come out of that. So, here's Washington, D.C. Go have your march. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, everybody goes and they go fill up their tank or gas or whatever. Right? Drive down. You don't have no money. Right? They're broke or whatever. You know, if you want to have a welfare, I can't afford to, but, but you're going to go to Million Man March. Mm -hmm you can't afford to pay your rent or whatever but you're gonna go to you know inauguration of a president of a private corporation that has nothing to do with you and you live in toronto <laughs> because this is history your first black mm -hmm. president so we have to go show mm -hmm. you know what i mean the children that you know they can be something if president. they good when when he himself said i'm not black out of his own mouth, he said that he's not black, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a documented fact that That's they said it, yeah. that he said that mm -hmm. I'm not black, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Of shadow and the caste code color game, mm -hmm. right? Of chattel. Of chattel. All right? And this is from Truth About Your Birthrights. Again, RV Bay Publications, because you know, we don't stray <laughs> from the master teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, going all over, trying to talk to all these different Moors about whatever. RV Bay Publications, every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Moorish Guideposts, every day, all day. MoorishCivilLetter.net, every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Moorish Nation Public Records, so you can go and you can study writs, because mm -hmm. all the writs that are on that website have all the keys that you need in order to save yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to go out there and buy no $50, $80 books about the history of the Moors. Mm -hmm. Just go read some writs that are on Moorish Nation Public Records, mm -hmm. and you'll get the, fu the full history about the Moors. Yeah, yeah. Right? Of shadow. Shadow is a law term mm -hmm. which has been and is politically applied to human beings yeah. who have been dehumanized mm -hmm. by the U.S. Demos artificial, pers artificial person constructs and acts of forced enslavement. Shadow means an article of goods or a thing and is specifically applied in law to goods movable or immovable except such as have the nature of freehold status shadow is also spelled cattle c-a-t-e-l yeah. yeah. and is really the same word as cattle or cows mm -hmm. the subtlety 
of its social political use in society is to make an apparent distinction between a socially and politically neutered or civilly dead human being and that of a common beast of the field. The Negro, nigger, shadow tag is a favored sobriquet coined by modern day demo European slaveholders in order to misleadingly tax, license, regulate, and distinguish their state controlled shadow property from free moors and to separate them from other free people, free nationals, and from other free sovereign African or Asian national or political states. The word Negro in Latin, the word Negro is Latin and defines as black, being grammatically interchangeable. As the political miscarriage that it is, Negro means social, moral and civil death which must which with much emphasis put upon that mental political and social state of civil death and of spiritual death as in one with a politically broken spirit right? the conquering Europeans successes at North America with their artificial creation of the Negro status or black status since they're interchangeable laid the illusory groundwork as was perversely needed by them to support the colorable erection and construction of the false political jurisdiction now used for imposing fictional claims of authority identity fraud and of colorable legality and law these colorable jurisdictions were then and are now designed to steal the birthrights of the aboriginal and indigenous moors of america north central and south thus these false names and jurisdictions are the prime institutionalized origins of promoting color codes color of law and the status neutralizing term colored people in law color means a fake counterfeit and artificial of the caste code color game color according to law means an appearance a semblance or a simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real color is prima facie or an apparent right and thus is a deceptive appearance being or having a plausible assumed exterior and concealing a lack of reality being a disguise or pretext color also has a connotative role in the slave deluding demo culture of north america under european demo politics the word and phrases color colored people and people of color combine as social fraud and another nom de guerre additive and are by their nature and intent man of straw monikers used in slave deluding practices the caste code color status is also used to socially and politically remove the deliberately targeted natural people from the benefits of high culture economic security from freedom and from self-governance so keep in mind right keep in mind what we spoke about when we started right that the color game <laughs> the color game is a fraud right there's no, such thing, stuff, there's no such thing as the color game. So this policy enforcer holding up this okay and not okay Stays color up. scheme mm. to try to say, you know, well, you know, depending on what color you are yeah, means yeah. you're good to go, you know, get home safe or whatever, mm. right? Mm. Is a fraud because color 
also has, connot has a connotative role in the slave deluding demo. The word and phrase is color. Colored people and people of color combine as social fraud and another non gear additive and are, by their nature and intent, man of straw monikers used in slave deluding practices. The caste code, color, status, is also used to socially and politically remove the deliberately targeted natural people from the benefits of high culture society, economic security from freedom and from self-governance. Moors, right, Moors of North America, which Peter obviously green, proclaimed, right? Moors of North America, yeah. Moors of North America, who have been groomed under demo European controlled education and misinformation, were trained through successive generations to falsely believe that colored means a legitimate nation of people like others and a legitimate part of the human family from Africa. Of course, nothing could be further from truth facts. No Negro Deja country exists on the planet. No Blackadonia country exists on the planet. And no Coloredina country exists anywhere in the world. Nor can any such a desperate nation of people be found in human history. Nor possess a national flag, a national seal, nor a constitution. But a naive, miseducated, and subjugated people who were deliberately and artificially forced into a state of illiteracy had little to no political opinions to bring remedy to their social, economic, political, and artificial, artificially induced color status. The colonizing Christian Europeans had stripped the Moors of all and any land, gold, or other wealth. All that was Moorish was confiscated. The Negro and colored man of straw tags and the corporate fictitious status involves veiling the existence of and imposing the firmly held life, debasing and undignified condition of black code systems. So keep in mind that status nationality is the order of the day mm -hmm. if goddamn peter griffin <laughs> right family guy family, family guy family guy knows about it if family guy could have a fez that's not marked right and be told you're good you're good <laughs> get home safe <laughs> right no license Right? No stopping acts for license, no insurance, no nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Just, you're good. Get home safe. And we're going to say that, you know, this is a racial right thing because they have the color code and then they have the, the line saying that, you know, mm -hmm. the darker ones are not okay, not okay. and the lighter okay. ones are okay. Mm -hmm. When you look up color, it says artificial, semblance, mm -hmm. simulacrum. Mm -hmm. Any color. That means that right this thing right here should be discarded. Right? Yeah. Right? This thing should be discarded. And then we should just recognize that it's because of his status mm. why you're good mm -hmm. and you can go. <laughs> right? Okay. So we wanna say Islam to the Moors. Mm. We're gonna go through our Little readings for today. Um, Truth about your birthrights. RVBayPublications.com. You can get that from there. All right. The fall of America. You know, don't get it twisted. You know, what I mean, if you can get these, get them. Mm. 
so you could know the crap that these guys are talking trying to push on people since the 1930s mm -hmm. that everybody bought mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. that they're trying to keep the people in mental yeah. slavery because mm -hmm. there's no need for all this black stuff in here and just call the people Asiatics or just call them Moors and yeah. you know what I mean and done right okay King Alfred plan mm. RV Bay publications again right 1969, 1969. so it's known right blacks Indians Latinos Puerto Ricans and poor whites you know and remember remember we would never ever be mad at the Euro in high school. I used to hang out with the and I would say, you know, yo, you know, you're like you're like a black guy. <laughs> you're like a black guy. How come you how come you can say nigger and it's okay? How come you can hang out with us? How come you like rice and peas and jerk chicken and stuff like that? <laughs> you know what I mean? How come you're not complaining about pepper? <laughs> in the food and, and, and you like sorrel and mobby and all that type of stuff. You know? You like sugar cake and coconut drops. <laughs> right? Because poor whites were down with us. They were slaves too. Right? And driver's license fraud. Right? Again, RV Bay Publications. You know what I'm saying? And again, we want to send a big Islam to all the Moors who's been contacting Canaan land Moors, who's been listening to classes coming to classes all the people who's been supporting Canaan land Moors, right and also the 101 questionnaire for Moorish Americans and you can pretty much get this from any Moors out there you know it's also online CanaanLandMoors.com. all right actually since we're here let's do a quick run through just so everybody could you know Let's just get some stuff out there, right? Okay. U.S. Nigger Industry. RV Bay Publications. Right? Taj Street Bay. All right. Uh, Are You in Denial of Your Ancestry? By RV Bay. Okay. You know, you get that from rvbaypublications.com. All right. We Are the Washita. And don't forget, all these are nice little, you know, these are nice easy reads mm -hmm. that filled with information. All right? We are the Washita. Moors, Mexicans, and other South Al Moroccan indigenes. All right? RVBayPublications.com. Mm -hmm. How to Live Within Contracts by Grand Sheik Nature El Bay. MoorishGuidepost.com Right? Um, Mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood or the Red Book as it's known in the Arab Chamber. So make sure you go to your Grand Sheikh of the Temple and demand that they give you the Red Book that's in the Arab Chamber because it's supposed to be given to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed okay. to be hidden in the Arab Chamber okay. mm -hmm. because they hide it in the Arab Chamber because no this is the second part of the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple mm -hmm. and these two books go together mm -hmm. right and they'll never tell you that they'll tell you no you have to be part of the adepts in order to get this book and all this type of stuff mm -hmm. trying to own your birthright so mm -hmm. go to the temple go to your grand sheiks out there and ask them for the mysteries of the silent brotherhood of the East mm -hmm. which is known as the Red Book mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's known as the Red Book let me just see if I find it Right? It's known as the Red Book, <laughs> right? It's literally a Red Book, right? It says unity, Allah, Islam. There's a crescent star on it, you know what I mean? Camel with the pyramids, and then the circle seven on the bottom to let you know that it's attached to the circle seven, right? The Red Book. Make sure you talk to your heads to get this, because they'll definitely try to hide that from you, right? And then if you, just so you can hold them to their obligation, make sure you go get administrative functions 
and then administrative functions lets you know what the job of every position in the Morris Science Temple is okay. so mm -hmm. if they're not doing their job you can ah. pull up the administrative function mm -hmm. and say well yo your job as yeah. grand whatever is to do this 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 you yeah. haven't been doing this for the past 50 years mm -hmm. that you've been sitting in that seat mm -hmm. maybe it's time for you to get out that seat and let somebody else do get that, in there yeah. who can do the job yeah since you don't want to do it mm -hmm. right and again rvbaypublications.com right and last but not least rights of indigenous people another book by Grand Sheik Nature El Bay MoorishGuidepost.com right that was just a little extra just so mm -hmm. you know what I mean people could know that they, you know, you're not oh yeah one more um, mm -hmm. and Nobu Juali last the last prophet you know, sorry about my book beat up and stuff, but you know, <laughs> we go in, in <laughs> we go in, right? Um, sevenSealsPublications.com, right? Okay. For Islam, again, to all the Moors, we appreciate y'all's time and energy and, you know, being, being in class. Everybody who was online, we had about, you know, flipping between nine and nine and seven tonight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Also, apologies for the disruption. I don't know what happened, but... You know, there was a cut somewhere, so it's going to be um, uploaded in two classes. So just look out for, you know, one of them is going to be part one, one of them is going to be part two, um, called the same thing. So, um, yeah, so we'll just close out with the prayer and get this going so we can, see, I think, civil alerts up tonight. So um, make sure we get our dose of Santasha and Islam to Sister Santasha for stepping up. And going and dealing with these these people in the oh, she had a, um she went to the to the, the city meeting okay. you know and she was talking about you know the more status and these people violating the constitution or whatever uh, you know uh -huh. it was uh -huh. okay pretty so good, just yeah. putting them on blast putting them on blast you know yeah. five on the left two on the right a lot of father of the universe father of love truth peace freedom and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Nobu Juali, Islam, peace and hotel. And once again, don't forget, you know, if you're in Toronto, Iron Sheep, Moorish MC, and One Oak opening for Killer Priest. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. August 10th, 2013. Mm -hmm. Annex Rec Room, 794 Bathurst Street. We got the tickets for $15. It's $30 at the door. Don't sleep on Killer Priest. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> don't sleep on Killer Priest. Make sure you go get that new album, mm -hmm. The Psychic World of Walter Reed. Yeah. He goes in. Trust me. Mm -hmm. He goes in. Mm -hmm. Right? Trust me. He goes in. Yeah, he sampled some of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Of, the, some of the good... Yeah. It's a good one, alright? Islam Mars, peace and love. Hotel.